Okay, uh, my name is Nick, and I'm going to be refuting the argument made that says the total control program will reduce accidents more than the Motorcycle Safety Foundation training course. Um, his secondary claims were the MSF course does not cover the psychological aspect of motorcycling, and his second point was the MSF basic course is not enough to survive in a real course scenario. So first off, my opponent starts off with a quote from Dr. Headlands stating several states suggested that specific motorcycle safety programs may have played a role in decreasing or limiting the increase in motorcyclist accidents. Now the problem with this is that I believe it's very weak. Um, it doesn't state specifically that California was one of those states that um, agreed with that statement and it doesn't say that the total control program was one of the programs that was also stated in that previous um, quote because uh, it, it kind of, it, it's no longer a debate. That quote can't really be used because according to um, chp.com, California, effective January 1st, 2015, has adopted the total control program and the MSF program has been dropped. Um, so it just, it, it, it does weaken that quote. It shouldn't really be used anymore. Um, according to an interview done by Ophir Ramirez Rios, CHP put a new contract out for motorcycle motorcycle training course, and they wanted more control over the program. Uh, so they put new requirements that the P, that the programs they use had to meet. Um, so what the way that works is that different programs then bid, and then CHP then decides on the highest bidder. Uh, MSF did not bid this year round. So because of that, that doesn't necessarily mean that their courses were bad. It just means that they simply did not bid. Uh, and Total Control happened to bid more than they did. Uh, so kind of the whole new, new kid on the block thing, the new kid that hasn't been around as long now gets all the attention. Um, my other response uh, is addressing how my opponent said that uh, it does, they don't show you that program, the MSF program doesn't show you how to overcome your fear or um, train you how to be into, have the right mindset when you're on a motorcycle. Um, according to helpguide.org, no one program, whether it concerns rehabilitation, training, discipline, therapy, or driving, et cetera, is, is a right fit for every single person. Every single person on this planet learns differently. You can't ask one person to overcome fear this way. Um, you can't ask a whole group of people to overcome fear in the specific way. So um, the driving program that is used by CHB does need to be uh, universal, and the total control program is not. Uh, my response to his second claim that MSF basic course is not enough to survive in, a, in driving in a real war scenario. Um, my opponent talks about splane litting, or lane splitting. Uh, and it's not being covered in the MSF program, and it's causing about half of fatal accidents. Um, <clears throat> according to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, no matter what they drive, no matter what course they take, teenagers are more likely than drivers their parents' age to crash. The extra risk is amplified by teens on motorcycles. So it's not necessarily the program, it's more the kids and teenagers being, I guess, cocky on the road. Um, I personally have done it, I've gotten two tickets being cocky and going fast, so again, that's my fault. Um, it's not necessarily the training programs. The training programs can only tell you to follow the laws so much, and if you don't, that's all on you. Um, MSF must be effective enough to have been around for as long as it has. It was established in 1973 and has been used ever since this year. Like I said before, the total program was just adopted. Um, and it has been successful because according to the uh, Institute, Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, 71% there has been a 71% decrease in accidents since 1975, which is only two years after the program was adopted. Uh, so obviously the course must be doing something right, otherwise they wouldn't have used it for so long. Um, MSF course does give, uh, that may not give the students more seat time, but um, the average student will still drive the amount of miles that they need to in a given class. Um, my opponent also stated that uh, drivers need to learn the physics of a motorcycle before getting on it, uh, which I do agree with. However, it is not the state's job, uh, and it is not the 
it's not the state's job to teach the basics they are to teach the physics of a motorcycle it is their job to teach the basics of the motorcycle and then it is a, it is up to the driver if they don't feel comfortable with the physics of the motorcycle the balancing and all that so in conclusion uh, the MSF course does have a good record the past since 1975 for being CHP's choice of um, a program for motorcycle driving. Again, lots of exposition and background on this, and I know that there's a reason for that because you're trying to describe the difference between the two programs and the difference in the bidding process. I thought at the beginning the notion that uh, that uh, TCP got the bid in California and that MSF basically didn't participate that in 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 that bidding process was an interesting one. It would be nice to know why they didn't participate in that process. It may have been that the bid was written in such a way that they couldn't, given the way their program is structured. I don't really know. But I do think that you make a reasonable inference here that that is not a demonstration that their program is a failure or incapable of solving these particular issues. Um, the focus on the lane splitting issue uh, seems to be like a key point between the two programs, especially since so many of the uh, accidents are related to that particular point. And I still don't know why what MSF does on lane splitting is insufficient and why TCP by ignoring lane splitting which sounded to me like what the California rules are going to do uh, it fixes that problem it's you know a little bit ambiguous on that to me the strongest argument that you had was on the second point which suggested that the real reason that accidents happen is because uh, of who the drivers are and you mentioned that the teens are most responsible for that and you use uh, a personal example to facilitate that one as well and then I think you've got a nice piece of evidence that says look we started using this program in 1973 and since 1975 we've had a 71% decrease that seems to suggest that the MSF program is pretty effective and it has been working what's the data on the TCP program Let's keep it simple like this, because that's basically what it comes down to, a comparison between these two programs, and the advocate is saying this one is going to work better, and it's going to produce better results. So what evidence do we have that it's going to produce better results? I don't know. You know did the advocate present any evidence? You needed to talk about the advocate's evidence on those points a little bit more. I thought you did a pretty good job presenting evidence for the other program. It says, look, we know that it's worked. So we need a little bit more contrast on those points. Thank you all for your patience tonight. Uh, we got through a